Um, let's undo that and maybe make this curve like this or not. Curves can be a bit tough to, to get right. But uh, let's just move these here. Maybe actually move this one down or along the Y. Actually, let's undo and just move these move this back along the Y about halfway or 0.8 and maybe just move this one Okay, that's not working. Just move it back as close as you can so that it, it realigns. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We have this entire contour done. So the next step is to do these parts, and that's very easy. So let's extrude this curve here. And you can see that we're getting this sort of sine wave effect here, which is not exactly ideal. Let's just move this over here for now and just rotate it along so that it follows this line here, maybe scale it down just so we can see what we're doing a bit better. Now the problem here is that we're getting this smooth transition from this control point to this control point, which we do not want because we have this nice sharp angle here. So this is where these pink or dark orange handlebars come in handy because you control each individual point. Let's just rotate this and just line it up and now you get this very nice sharp angle. And it's looking pretty good so far. And let's just continue extruding these and maybe bring one on the other side and rotate it around so that it matches. And maybe subdivide this. The microphone is a bit too close to my face. There. Maybe subdivide this using W, subdivide, and maybe just bring this in, rotate it a bit and maybe scale these down or not. Maybe just move them up or maybe around. Move them around. Get this shape as close as you can or wherever you want. And we're already getting this very nice shape. I'm very happy with that. Let's actually let's delete this segment. Uh that one. And maybe just Turn these back, or maybe just move these up. And maybe move this one back. And try and get it symmetrical along this axis here. Now let's extrude this over here. And extrude it again along the x axis all the way over here. Rotate it around. And maybe scale it along the y axis along to zero so it just stays completely flat. And rotate this around. Actually, nice little trick here. Turn on this, um, okay, it doesn't seem to work. Shoot, okay, forget that. Let me just rotate it around so it looks flat. And scale it along the Y to zero. Okay, so next up we extrude this up the Y axis because what's the point of actually just moving it freehand when you can just move it along the Y? And rotate it. 180 degrees. Maybe bring it back down a bit and um, okay. Let me just fix something here. Now these handles are actually not—they're not in a ideal proportion because this one is now shorter than this one, and because I rotated it, now it's not the same. Let's just copy this X value here by pressing Control C, selecting this handle, Control V, and maybe just move this to the same location as this one, Control C, Control V, and that should now work. If we move these along the X axis, we can now get a uh, not similar uh, symmetric curve, and extrude this. Move it over here. And yeah, okay. And extrude this once again. Move it over here. Rotate it to match. Rotate this one to match. And just extrude this one again, but on the other side. And roughly there, or maybe here. Maybe rotate it around again, 180 degrees, maybe less. And then just 
bring these handles up. To make this curve, and then rotate this to match that angle there. And then select this curve, select this curve, and press F. No, that doesn't work. And press alternate C. Now that closes the curve off, and it now gives us our very own Blender logo. So that's basically it for the modeling. Now we all we have to do is change some settings. And I'm actually very happy with this because it really went very well. And, uh, whoops, I deactivated my numlock. There seems to be a thinning, it, it seems not as wide here as here, so that's kind of a problem. Let's move this over here and maybe move this slightly along the Y. Yeah, that looks better. Over here we're having a bit of a problem, so let's move it up a bit. Maybe rotate this ever so slightly by holding shift. Just rotating just a bit. And uh, yeah, that looks very good if I say so myself. So next up we have, whoops, let me just save here before I do anything else. Just in case everything crashes. So tutorials, Blender logo new version, and let's call this Blender logo tutorial. Whoops. Tutorila. Tutor. Tutor. Tutoturla. Nice. Tutorial. There. Blender logo tutorial. Just save that again just to be sure. And then just hide this panel here. So that's basically it for this. Uh, curve section. Next up will be the uh, the actual shape because right now it's flat. It's like a plane. So what we want to do here instead of extrusion, which is actually not the way this works with curves. You might have used curves before. You might not. But uh, the way you give thickness to this is the extrude value down here in the geometry in the object data panel. So if you go or at least rotate this around so you can see what you're doing. We just center our viewport to the actual object. Maybe turn this around like this. Uh, you have the extrude value here, which will put up, bring up to 0.2. And it gives it a thickness. Now it will automatically give it a thickness of 0.2 on either side. So whatever value you want, whatever thickness, put in half that value. So let's say you want 0.5, uh, thickness of 0.5, you put in 0.25. You get 0.25 on either side of the axis. Basically, as if you had extruded this up and then added a mirror modifier to uh, reflect along the Z. So let's bring this up to 0.3, maybe, or 0.4. Yeah, let's try 0.4. That looks pretty good. And there's also another thing that we can do. Let me just save, uh, and this will add just a nicer touch to this logo and that is the bevel depth value. Now you can just scroll this up and if I scroll it up enough you can see that we can have this bevel effect on either side or on the edges of the um what is it called? The uh the thing, the the the, the faces. Sorry I'm having trouble. <laughs> so yeah. However you cannot bring up the the bevel depth too high, otherwise you get these strange collision uh, things right here, and that can cause some pretty big problems. So um, let me just bring up the resolution. Maybe that will help. I've actually never really found how to fix that. So maybe 0 0.05 will do it. It'll just enough to give it a bit of more shape and. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's not as much as the original tutorial, but uh, oh, we can also bring down the offset. So let's say minus 0.2 and maybe ring up the bell depth a bit more. And maybe at 2.2 as well. And we are still getting those collisions, sadly. Let's just leave that at 0 0.05 and this at 0. Oops, 0. There. So that should be pretty good for a Blender logo. It looks pretty good. So the next step is modeling. Now let me just check my chem studio here. That 
is uh, 1630. Let's calculate that. 1630 over 60. That is 27 minutes. And uh, I'm actually going to cut this off and just start over with part two. So uh, back in a second. So uh, we're back. Now next step is materials. And that's actually very easy because we're going to be using the dropper here. Let's just uh, go into the materials panel here. You can scroll along the the header here and uh, just click new. Now this will create a material for the entire object. So we'll just leave it like that for now because we'll deal with this section later. So go into the diffuse color here, click and just choose this dropper. Bring it over to the image editor or the background image or even, oh, I even selected the background color of this box. Interesting. So split your view screen here, your view, 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 blah, 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 viewport, <laughs> viewport, and uh, change it over to image editor and click this button. Since you have your image loaded, you can just click it there and there it is. And we're going to be using this as our color reference because right here there's transparency, so it'll just create this weird color. So just choose the color orange right here because it's pretty much solid and bring up the intensity and maybe bring up the hardness of the specularity to 100 and maybe just a bit more specularity like 0.6 and maybe bring this over to Fong or maybe even Tune so that'll make it nice and sharp but uh, yeah, you know, so let's experiment with, experiment with that Smooth will try 0 0.05 just so it's a bit sharper and maybe just a bit less there Maybe even t turn this over to tune if you want and do tune shading, but I was just looking for the specularity. I mean, let's try a few. Yeah, that, that looked good. Um, maybe bring it down a bit. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe 0.15. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I like that. So next up is the center circle, but uh, let's rename this material here. Let's call it uh, logo underscore orange. And uh, before I forget, let's rename this object too. Go into the object panel. Yeah, object. And just rename this logo or Blender logo. Copy this data here, control C. Go into the object data, copy, paste it here, control V. And uh, we should be good to go with the blue. Let's uh, actually scale this in. We don't really need the entire size. And let's create a new material. So let's plus, press the plus sign here. And you can see that there's this two that's sitting here. That, so that means there are two users of that material. So just click it to create an independent copy so we can create uh, a material without changing the origin, original. Ugh. Having trouble talking. Let's logo underscore blue. And we'll do the same step. Select the color box, select the color picker, and just choose the solid blue. And that should be fine. Yep, that should be fine. However, there's nothing blue on this right now. So go into edit mode, select this entire section, and just click assign. So you now have this blue cylinder right in the middle of your Blender logo. And I have to say so, that really looks like an official model. It could be, yeah, it's like much closer than the original tutorial ever was. So I'm very, very happy about that. And uh, whoops, I accidentally placed my 3D cursor here. If you do that and you want it right back at the center, just press Shift S and, uh, or you can go into the end panel, but if your object itself is right at the center, just press Shift S3, which pretty much uh, brings up the snap panel and the three is for the third option which is cursor to select it. Okay, so you could basically do it like this and it could be fine, but what I want to do here is add in some texture. So just go into your textures panel with your correct material selected and just click new. We'll call this lo logo underscore clouds because we're going to be using two textures switch this over to materials so you can see what you're doing or even both but I'd rather have 
material. 